The question about the existence of dimensions other than ours has been lingering in the scientific community ever since the discovery of space. The idea was pondered on by Einstein himself, and then more recently by Theodore Kaluza in the 1970s. Both of them, along with others, believe that there are other dimensions in space beyond the usual X, Y, and Z we already know. What will these dimensions look like, and are we any closer to proving their existence? It all dates back to 1916, as the biggest global forces fought it out on the battlefield. Albert Einstein, one of the greatest minds ever, retired himself to his study to focus on more eternal matters. He had managed to extend his special theory of relativity, the one developed back in 1905, to include gravity. With his theory, gravity was turned from a mere force to a curved geometry in four space-time dimensions. Fast forward to the 1970s and Theodore Kaluza had his own questions about the theory. Einstein proposed that geometry was dynamic and central to the physics of gravity. And so, Theodore thought, what if instead of using the usual four space-time dimensions, one time dimension and three space dimensions, we considered writing the equations for five space-time dimensions, four space dimensions, and one time dimension. At first, the idea was deemed ridiculous for we live in a world of three dimensions. But that didn't stop Kaluza. He argued that the fifth dimension was so small, rendering it invisible. To prove his claims, the German mathematician went ahead and solved Einstein's equations for five dimensions. The result was astonishing. Solving the equations gave Kaluza a set of equations that only described Einstein's three dimensions, but also hinted at the interaction of an additional force that behaved in a way similar to the electromagnetic forces we are familiar with. Kaluza had basically found that gravity in the four space dimensions with one small hidden dimension was equivalent to gravity in the conventional four space dimensions. However, a good part of the century, Kaluza's findings and the concept of hidden dimensions were shelved. Later in the 1970s, the string theory came about that shifted the focus back to hidden dimensions. The idea of string theory is not easy to grasp, but if we were to simplify it, it's to take strings, make them relativistic, and then quantum mechanical, and then study them. Basically, string theory determines how strings move through space and interact with one another. However, when the theory was used to study the nuclear force binding the atoms, the probabilities didn't add up, and less space was assumed to have additional six spatial dimensions other than the three we already know of. With the string theory's supposed failure, it was likely that the scientific community would abandon it, unless not for the efforts of Michael Green and John Schwartz two scientists who kept the flame for hidden dimensions. To these scientists, the calculations simply couldn't be discarded. They were all too perfect to do so. So, was it that the string theory was wrong, or was it that the scientists were dealing with something beyond their understanding? Was string theory the quantum theory of gravity all along? Green and Short's questions were met with disinterest because the community found it all too obscure. Not to mention that with string theory not being consistent with the particles making the standard model, their case was only weakened. However, in 1984, Michael Green and John Schwartz found the solution to it all at a conference in Aspen. They discovered a missed term that had previously been neglected in the calculations. With this included, all the calculations made perfect sense. It was called the Green-Schwartz anomaly cancellation. And with that, string theory became popular in the community. Scientists tried desperately to relate the physics of the six dimensions of string theory to the four dimensions and the standard model. So, where are we now on all that research? Well, not any closer we tell you that. Hidden dimensions remain as elusive to us as when they were first thought of. It might come as shocking to some of you who believe that we're in the age of science and technological advancements. The second part of this video explains the science of hidden dimensions and just why we've been unable to prove their existence. The only reason we can see one another is that the wavelength of light is smaller than a micrometer, or in other words, a million of a meter. With that said, objects smaller than this can't be seen. Visible light simply lacks the structure to resolve objects as small as atoms. However, just because we can't see atoms, we can feel their effects. When you sit down on a chair, you're not really falling through it. Are you now? That's because the atoms of the chair have their own repulsion that's holding back your atoms from breaking the chair barrier. With that said, scientists have often wondered what would be the analog for extra dimensions. If there is a secret geometry at the smallest of distances, what effects would it generate at larger distances? So far, we know of three dimensions, one for moving up and down, and two for moving horizontally. With that said, 
If someone were to define dimensions, they'd be labels to locate where an object is, just like coordinates work. But what happens when we introduce four more dimensions? None of us can conceive what that would be like. To get a better understanding, consider an ant moving on a vine. The ant can either move forwards or backwards. To the ant and us, the vine only has one dimension. But when you look at things under an electron microscope, you'll notice that the cells are arranged in different directions, meaning there are two dimensions instead of one. We're just too big to resolve these smaller dimensions. With that said, if we want to sense these other dimensions, we need tools to resolve these incredibly small distances, one that we don't have at the moment. The fundamental strings of the string theory could be small enough to make use of them. However, we did talk about how as small as these dimensions are, we can feel their effect. And in the case of these hidden dimensions, this happens through particles. It's a concept of mathematics that the type of interaction of these particles would reflect the geometry of the hidden dimensions we so desperately want to know about. Talking about physics, these particles would be the same as what a photon is to light. So far, we have the moduli, the minimal quantum lump for extra dimensions. One could ask that if we know about the particle, why can't we just observe the fifth dimension by making the particles collide using the CERN Large Hydrogen Collider? That's what we've done so far when it comes to discovering particles. Well, the problem is that moduli behave like gravity. And if anyone knows their physics, you'd know that gravity is the weakest of all forces. And asking a collider to run these forces is next to impossible. So where does that leave us? In search for more particles is easier said than done because creating these particles requires extreme conditions, one that could only be found when the universe first came into existence. It all sounds hopeless, but that isn't stopping scientists from making progress. In fact, researchers from the Max Planck Institute for Gravitational Physics of the Albert Einstein Institute have put forward a study that might just take us one step further in the search for hidden dimensions. According to these novel researchers, we may not be able to detect these extra dimensions, but we can observe their effect on something that we can detect, AKA gravitational waves. With this in mind, these ripples could very much be the key to cracking it all. Scientists will be making use of LIGO, Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, that first detected gravitational waves from a black hole binary back in September 2015. LIGO has given birth to LISA, the in-space manifestation of the former. Both of these instruments have been pivotal in the discovery of supermassive black holes and other space secrets, which is why the quest for the discovery of the hidden dimensions seems just a little bit more helpful. Despite years of staying in the dark, the hunt for answers continues with the same passion, considering what's at stake here. The dimensions hidden are the core part of the string theory. Their existence not only ties in with the string theory, but also the theory of quantum gravity, one that had been plaguing Einstein on his deathbed. The quantum theory of gravity could essentially unify the theory of general relativity and quantum mechanics. Heralding the beginning of a new era for mankind, these answers could explain the Big Bang, tell us what goes on inside black holes, and all the other mysteries that continue to evade us. And with that, our video comes to a close. What are your thoughts on the matter? Where do you see the search for hidden dimensions going? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time, bye now.